Hey guys, welcome to my retrospective on the game Oh Mummy, a maze game developed and published by Gem Software in 1984 under the Sinclair Research banner. Gem Software are also responsible for developing the Roland series, Roland Goes Digging, Roland in Time, as well as Disco Dan, a game I'm also very familiar with from the 80s. In fact, my history with both Disco Dan and Oh Mummy goes back to the Christmas I received the ZX Spectrum as a present. The computer came with a collection of games from Gem Software and another developer called Mr. Micro, but more on them another time. On to the game itself. Load it up and get to the title screen and the iconic Oh Mummy music starts to play. I've had it stuck in my head for the better part of 40 years now and I still hum it from time to time. As far as I understand it, the music is from the children's song The Streets of Cairo or The Poor Little Country Maid but I haven't been able to verify it myself. Now, the title screen is basically the in-game matrix or grid, with the middle three squares of the second row and all five squares of the third row taking up the actual game title. In each of the four corners are collectible items that you would do well to pick up during gameplay, and in the case of the mummy sarcophagus, top left, and the key, bottom right, essential to progress through the game. You can see that the graphics are very simple and nothing to write home about, even for a specky title. Squares with no items in them are the usual monochrome colour. Squares that do hold an item do gain a colour. Purple, treasure, mummy and key, green, scroll, blue. Simple, but effective. Now bypass the title screen and you'll get to the high score table. From here you can either press I to read the instructions or P to, be to begin the game. With regards to the former, there are four pages of instructions, which is amazing for such a simple game. Pressing P will allow you to change the controls, as well as select the difficulty and speed of the game. I personally recommend starting with 1 and 1 respectively to familiarize yourself with the game. Let's get into the story and gameplay, such as they are. You play an archaeologist sent to the pyramids of Egypt to look for hidden treasure. The matrix that makes up the in-game grid basically represents a tomb located inside the pyramid. A complete pyramid consists of five tombs or levels, after which the British Museum announces the successful excavation of an ancient Egyptian tomb. Then you enter another more difficult pyramid, and another five levels await exploration and so on. The main objective in each level is to collect the mummy and key and escape via the exit in the bottom right of the screen, and only by acquiring these two items can you then proceed to the next level. If you're lucky enough, you'll also collect hidden treasure for more points. If you're unlucky, you'll wake up another of the pyramid's guardians, basically the mummies. You see, you start the first level with a guardian already after you. However, there's a square with the hidden second guardian within the level, and uncovering it means you'll have two mummies chasing after you now. You can somewhat mitigate this by finding the scroll, but it only kills one mummy and only works once anyway, nor does the scroll's power transfer over to the next level. Any guardians that survive the level you're currently on follow you to the next one.
and covering squares is as easy as walking fully along all four sides. Doing so leaves footprints behind, which are the white dots you see on screen. It's not enough to stop three quarters of the way through a site though, as it won't count. The more squares you uncover, the greater the number of points you gain. However, be wary of uncovering the aforementioned secret guardian. The more levels you pass, the more guardians you'll have to contend with. Plus, not all squares will have a hidden object. And that's about it really. The graphics are quite plain and simple, the mummies look like yellow skull and crossbones, and you can barely tell that the archaeologist has an explorer's hat on. Plus there's no in-game music to speak of, but this game has it where it counts. It oozes charm, charisma, and the gameplay is simple but effective, and very addictive. If you haven't had a chance to play this one yet, I highly recommend giving it a go. And that's it as far as this retrospective is concerned. This is your friendly neighborhood lounge night, signing off.